Good evening everybody and welcome to our meeting this evening. There are some seats in the middle if people no, might prefer to stand. Okay, <laughs> there are some seats though, so please do feel free to have a seat. And there's also some water over here if anyone needs to get a drink because it can get a little bit hot. We're coming towards the end of the summer, aren't we? Anyway, very warm welcome to everyone. I will just read this statement because we do have people that I haven't seen here before. A fire drill is not expected this evening, so if the alarm sounds, please evacuate the building quickly and calmly. Please use the stairs and do not use the lift. Once outside of the building, please gather opposite by the Yorkshire Bank. Um, exit by the door from which you entered, that one with the green fire exit sign. Um, if you need any assistance in evacuating the building, please make yourself known to a member of staff and they'll all have a, a green lanyard on. Please also make sure you that your mobile phones are either turned off or put to silence so that we can hear everybody who wishes to speak tonight. And I would also advise that all or part of the meeting will be recorded for future broadcasts. Okay. Uh, we have no apologies for absence, everyone is here. Um, declarations of interest in addition to those that are printed on the agenda. Uh, are there any? No. Okay. Uh, the minutes of the previous meeting are on page eight. Do we all agree those are some true of the meeting? to item five which is public consultation i've been advised that the following people wish to speak so if your name doesn't appear and you do wish to speak can you please let our committee clerk kelly know and we'll try to accommodate that so i've got speakers on item six the borough plan lynn price councillor kyle evans john adams dennis white alan gilby councillor pandur Lubs Sikovic, have I pronounced that correctly? You certainly have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor John Glass, Carl Mayer, Mark Sullivan, Bob Copland, Adrian Collins, Andy Briggs, Mrs. Isabel Jakes, and Councillor Claire Goldby. Item 7, Councillor Chris Wilson. Item 8, Councillor Chris Wilson. Uh, item 9A, Councillor Chris Wilson, and Councillor, uh, item 9B, Councillor Chris Wilson. Okay, is there anyone whose name hasn't been read out but has already indicated they wish to speak? Okay, in that case then I'm going to move on to item 6, the Borough Plan uh, consideration of further modifications. Councillor Phillips. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, before I listen to and take note of all your statements that are going to come this way, and we're all going to take note of them that are going to come this way, I think it's worth just taking one step back. I don't know how many people have seen the Cabinet report, but following the report to Cabinet on the 25th of July, and as mentioned in the report, further discussions have been held with the Planning Inspector about the updated sustainable appraisal of sites. This is ongoing thing every time at a different stage of the plan the sustainable appraisals are updated the discussions with the inspector uh, resulted in a letter dated the 8th of august from the inspector concerning the site allocation selection process and the site of the form formerly hawkesbury golf course black horse road now the site at hawkesbury had been considered throughout the local plan process as we know and during the preparation of the publication version of the local plan was recommended as a housing allocation. However, at that time, due to an objection from the Warwickshire County Council, the site was admitted. Now, um, it's also worth remembering that 
I think there's been two applications for that site in the past. Both were turned down on, um, I think, highway grounds and green belt. And it was envisioned, from our point of view, that it probably wouldn't be coming back. <coughs> However, let me reiterate, at that time, due to an objection from Watcher County Council, the site was admitted. The County Council, at that time, considered the site to be unviable. In the County Council's opinion, as Highway Authority, the site could not be accessed from the existing strategic road network, and an alternative would be costly and prohibit a valuable, viable housing scheme being brought forward. Now, as per usual, the promoters of the site continue to work to prove that the site could be developed, which is a fair comment, and undertook some further highway modelling, which led to the Highway Authority withdrawing their objection to the site. The withdrawal occurred just before the start of the examination hearings into the plan, and the updated position was put before the inspector for a statement of common ground between the County Council and the promoter. Now, as the County Council's objection was the only reason for admitting the site. This council, as the local planning authority, also entered into a statement of common ground, which we had to do with the promoter. Statements of common ground are statements of fact. Now, we're at this situation now, because I didn't expect to be back here in two, within two weeks or whatever, with another modification. So no one's more surprised than what we were. But having given you that little bit of background, I'll now listen to your statement, if that's okay. Thank you, Councillor Phillips. And can I just say that I think several cabinet members, if not all of us, have received emails in regard mm -hmm. to the borough plan and modifications. We value those emails. Some came as late as last evening, quite yeah. late. We have looked at the ones that we've received uh, up to this point. Thank you for those emails. And um, if we haven't always got back to you, bear with us. As I say, some of them did come in quite late last night, uh, but we do thank you for them. The first speaker then is Lynn Price. Thank Hi, you, Lynn. You can stand yeah. there. Well, thank you, Chair. I'm appalled that we're here tonight actually discussing Hawkesbury Village Golf Course put in the Borough Plan. There is no consultation with ourselves, the Hawkesbury Village Residents Association, or anyone living in Hawkesbury Village. Warwickshire County Council and an Eaton and Bedford Borough Council have been in discussions with the developers since April, as confirmed by documents that have recently been publicised. All areas that are currently within the borough plan have had hearings in front of a judge to discuss their concerns, and in some cases the amount of dwellings have been reduced. We have not had, nor will have, the privilege of this process. Strangely enough, the reductions equate to the proposed amount within the golf course application, and also not forgetting it, it takes into consideration the proposal for the marina. Stra um, the inspectorate, Mr David Spencer, has made recommendation for the golf course to be shoehorned into the borough plan because of Warwickshire County Council removing the original objection to this proposal. But we have never been told what changes have they believed to have been made and uh, have led them to leave the, on the 11th hour. Surely, as Cabinet members, you are already predetermined your decision on including this within the plan because it is not you who have to make the decision, it will be taken out of your hands. If this is the case, remember, you represent the, res the residents of Nuneaton and Bedworth, not your political parties, and you need to do the what's best for us. However, this process is nothing but a box-ticking, rubber-stamping exercise that's, which has never been open or honest. The agenda also refers to minor adjustments being considered. Again, looks like the decision has already been taken out of your hands. Rather than just look at looking at documents and maps, have any officers been to the site and spoken to residents? No one liked changes, but here are the following facts about Hawkesbury Village. It has gone from four streets and 122 dwellings to 22 streets and 740 dwellings. Fact. There's a live planning application for 87 more properties to be built on land alongside the former golf course. Fact. The road infrastructure in the village follows as one through road with a weak canal bridge at one end, a busy railway crossing in the middle and traffic lights at the other end. Fact. Network rail knuckle comes into effect in 2021, which means any surveys carried out recently will be incorrect because there will be an increase in rail traffic and crossing downtime. The study carried out by the developers claims to use the move late system to mitigate the increase in traffic. At peak times now you cannot get out of Black Horse Road, which is already supposed to be on the move late system. 
The impact on School Lane and Bacon Road, which is one of the busiest crossroads in Warwickshire, will also be affected by the increase, increase of traffic. We are aware of the pressure from the government, from local authorities, to accommodate and increase housing. However, taking into account how long the borough plan and various forms has been milling around in Eaton and Bedworth, it's appropriate the Cabinet should be adding an area at this late stage simply makes up numbers will not concern the residents in the area. And I will finish. We request that this area not be added to the borough plan under such circumstances and should the site owners be minded to develop the site, it should be taken through the standard route once questioned have been answers and consultation undertaken directly with the residents. I do have to bring you to I'm finished earlier. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Thank you for your comments. Are there any points of clarification? No. Just, just yeah. one. Uh, uh, Mr. Price, uh, just on, you mentioned right at the end on the consultation um, uh, side of things. What type of consultation do you require? Um, Same consultation everybody else hearings. has had, the hearings okay. that they had. We have been shoehorned into this. Everybody else has had a hearing to go to to discuss what their concerns are. Like it's been already been said, there's been previous applications gone through here that have gone through to the Secretary of State and refused on Greenbelt and also on encroachment into Balkington. So we've had no consultation. We've not even prepared. These people here have had years to prepare. We've been given eight blinking weeks. You know, this is so unfair and so unjust. You've got publicity going out there that Mr. David Spencer is writing these letters to say it should be shoehorned in because that's what's happening. It's being shoehorned in. And I don't give a damn about politics. This isn't about politics. This is about our lives. We live there. We have already trebled in size, in fact, more than that. And you're expecting for a single road to take all this. On the plan, it says there could be two entries. I'd love to know where. But we have not been consulted, we've not been spoken to, and we are being robbed, and it's unjust. Thank you very much, Mrs Price. I come then to Councillor Kyle Evans. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Chair. Um, what an utter mess this Council has put itself in. The Boa Plan fiasco continues, and it continues to cause chaos for the residents of Neneaton and Bedworth. The first sentence within the modifications for Hawkesbury on page 23 says it all. It says, this council must also the, consider the needs of Coventry City Council. Why must we consider the needs of Coventry? It's about time this council puts the interests of the people of Bedworth and Neneaton first, rather than trying to play to the tune of your Labour friends in Coventry. Let's be honest. If this council got its act together and submitted this plan years ago, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in now, and sites like Hawkesbury and the Woodlands probably wouldn't have to be included in the first place. The council has pushed Hawkesbury into the plan at the 11th hour, which means the residents will not be consulted in the same way which residents on the Woodlands, School Lane, Balkington, Whitestone and Wellington were consulted on. Not that that was good anyway, but, you know... Um, I think the council needs to accept its failings and meet the residents of Hawkesbury halfway. If you're serious about putting Hawkesbury in the plan, at least do it properly. Let's see the council hold some consultation events in the village. There's no excuse. There's a community centre and two pubs in the village who I'm sure will be more than, more than happy to open their doors uh, for these events. With the mess the council is in, I do believe that now is the time to seek an immediate review of the housing numbers, which can now be done by law after recent legislation passed by the government. The recent government white paper clearly states that this council does not need to build as many houses as it proposes, and actually if you went away and did this review, the overall housing figure would probably be reduced, and that's when you could take out some of the uh, strategic sites in the plan. <coughs> I also want to question why the cabinet wants to go with option three in the first place, on the 16th of August, Council has received a briefing note from the Head of Planning Policy. In this it stated, and I quote, Option 2, this was the option favoured by officers. Option 2 would have made Hawkesbury a reserved site rather than a full, proper strategic site in the plan. So I want to know what has changed uh, the minds of the Council to go from Option 2 to Option 3 in, su in such a short space of time. In conclusion, Chair, I would say if you really want to go ahead with this, Treat the people of Hawkesbury Village with a bit of respect and do it properly. And I really do suggest you consider an immediate review as a matter of urgency before this mess spirals out of control. Thank you very much. <coughs> when does 
very new housing figures estimations come in from the national policy framework changes? Uh, well, as the cabinet member for planning and development, I think you should know that. To be quite honest. I do know that. Yeah. I wonder if you so why are you asking me if you know the answer? <laughs> because I would like to know when you say that we should stop and review our <coughs> housing figures because well, the well, government. You, the you don't even know when you're delivering a dip home. Uh, excuse me. I think we need to be really careful that we conduct our uh, affairs here tonight in accordance with the very best standards that uphold the integrity of local government. No trick it's all right, it's coming from you. Excuse me, table, Councillor Gran, I would ask you to withdraw that comment. I I'd ask you to offensive. withdraw the borough plan. Uh, you were actually offensive and accused me of not upholding the integrity of local government. I'll ask you <coughs> to withdraw that comment. Uh, Councillor Evans, can I ask a point of clarification? Uh, absolutely. Well, I you, mentioned, I you mentioned you mentioned there were two pubs in Hawkesbury. Yeah. Would you agree with me that in actual fact there's one? Uh, Pedantic. The, uh, there's there's the one next to the canal, uh, which uh, is not in Hawkesbury. Pedantic. Uh, uh, with all due respect, it's about a two-minute walk from some of the residential. Can I ask, secondly, are you aware that the leaders of all of the Warwickshire districts and of Coventry uh, and of Warwickshire County Council all agreed very vehemently that Dunedin and Bedworth should take housing over spill, not just from Coventry but from other areas, which have said no. well, the in accordance <laughs> with planning guidance? I will add to that. If I was leader of the council, I'd put the residents of this borough first. Are you aware of the leaders of the other Warwickshire district? Yes, and, if, and the county council, who are all conservative. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Actually, encouraging. Yeah, because they probably want to put the interest of their residents first. That's why. Duty to cooperate. Yeah. Capitulate. And by the way, I haven't actually answered. I, I haven't. You haven't given me the opportunity to answer Councillor Phillips' question. I thought you did, Councillor Evans. But if you would like to I've answer been, again. I would like to, yes. I'd say to Councillor Phillips, as Cabinet Member for Planning, you should be aware of that information. And, you know, if you, can't, if you don't know you. that, I am aware if that you'd like the Conservatives to come and do the job for you, we'd be more than happy to. Thank you for your time, Councillor Evans. I've got John Adams, <coughs> Mr Adams. Thank you, Mr Adams. Good evening, my name is John Adams and I'm representing the landowner of former Hawkesbury Golf Course. The inspector required the council to update the previous sustainability assessment. The SA update is legally required and is a critically important part of plan preparation. The independently prepared update ranks Hawkesbury higher and more sustainable than all of the other strategic housing sites, higher even than those sites outside of the Greenbelt. The SA update takes account of the technical highways and railway studies and formal agreement with the Highway Authority that housing at Hawkesbury can be accommodated by the highway network. This is already before the inspector. The appeals in 2013 were dismissed by the Secretary of State because the site was in the green belt, not for highways reasons. The inspector is concerned that Hawkesbury was not allocated in the previous draft main modifications and that the council has failed to have proper regard to its own evidence base when preparing the plan with specific reference to Hawkesbury. The inspector sets out his options, but it is clear that the only option that he will accept that will not result in the plan being declared unsound is option three. My comments on the options are as follows. Option one, leave the site in the green belt. The council's green belt study and the SA update identify Hawkesbury as the most suitable site for release from the green belt for housing. The inspector said that he cannot reconcile leaving Hawkesbury in the green belt. If the council seeks to provide new evidence to justify leaving Hawkesbury in the green belt, the inspector will reopen the examination and will determine that it undermines the council's evidence base. He will no doubt declare the entire plan unsound because the council's evidence base demonstrates that Hawkesbury should be released to meet housing need and it is more sustainable to release Hawkesbury from the green belt than other allocated sites. Option two, safeguarding land. The council will need to give reasons to safeguard Hawkesbury, but this is impossible to do because the council's evidence base shows that release of Hawkesbury is less harmful to Greenbelt purposes than release of the other Greenbelt sites proposed in the plan. If the council seeks to provide new evidence to justify safeguarding Hawkesbury 
Again, the inspector will reopen the examination and no doubt will determine that it undermines the council's evidence base. Again, it will declare the entire plan unsound because the council's evidence base demonstrates Hawkesbury should not be released, sorry, should be released to meet housing need and it is more sustainable to release Hawkesbury from the Greenville than the other allocated sites. Option three, allocation of Hawkesbury. I support your officers and the inspector's reasons in recommending Hawkesbury is allocated. In addition, the council's Greenbelt study and SA updates show that Hawkesbury is the most suitable and sustainable site to release from the Greenbelt. The inspector will not accept that necessary exceptional circumstances exist to release from the Greenbelt the less sustainable and less suitable sites. This is regardless of housing need. If I can just finish uh, one more Mr. line. Mr. Uh, Adams, I'm going to be very strict because okay. I did actually close down some comments from the people. I'm not wishing thank to be rude at all. Mm -hmm. Can I thank you very much? Are yeah. there any points of clarification? Yeah. Mr. Adams, sorry. sorry. There is Apologize. a point of clarification from mm -hmm. Council. Um, first of all, do you live in Hawkesbury? No. 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 So you don't live with the issues on the roads currently in Hawkesbury? No, I don't. Know. No, we never okay. choose to either. Um, on the second question, if the County Council hadn't withdrawn uh, their objection on highway grounds, because apparently you had done the extra work on the highway grounds to prove to the County Council mm. that um, the road system in that area could take it, would we have been sitting here today? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not talking to you. Talking to the gentleman there. No, we wouldn't have. Of course, we throughout throughout the examination process, we have made the case okay. to the inspector. But you're right. We wouldn't and have. as I say, you said you didn't live in Hawkesbury. Um, so can I ask, um, are you fully aware of the issues in Hawkesbury with the railway crossing, mm -hmm. the road system, the one way in or two ways in if you count the canal bridge? Um, are you fully aware of them and the problems that Hawkesbury currently face? I've been a professional planner for 20 odd years. I've never been involved in a project as long as thoroughly as this one. I've been involved in this project since 2008. I submitted the applications and dealt with the appeals that went to committee, uh, went to the Secretary of State in 2013. Um, I've been involved in this for a very long time. I've been to Hawkesbury so many times. I know Lynn Price. I, I've held consultation events at the, the pub on the, on the canal. Um, I do know Hawkesbury very well, and I know the implications. And the amount of work that was undertaken by the highway consultants in, correspondence, in liaison with many different officers at the highway authority to reach that point, to satisfy every question that could possibly come up about the impact of vehicles from the site on the Black Horse Coventry Road, on the Canal Bridge, and on the level crossing, if Knuckle was to come forward at the full capacity. The level of surveys that was undertaken there, including rail experts from, from Chester and you know, nationally renowned rail experts who produced, produced studies for National Rail. Um, I've never known a site be promoted that has had this amount of de very, very detailed um, and technical evidence supported in the promotion of it. Thank you very much. Mr. One more point. Um, so you've done all those detailed surveys on the area, uh, the traffic studies, etc. Um, did you do the main survey? Did you consult and talk to the local people and how it affects them at the moment? I didn't do the highway survey. The highway experts did the highway survey on the town planner. Thank you. Um, Can we thank you very much and thank you for answering the points of clarification as well. Thank, thank you. Very you. Thank you. Uh, I think I've got a Dennis White, <coughs> yes. Whitestone Residence Action Group. Thank you, Mr. White. Um, this is not necessarily about Hawkesbury directly, but it's about the same principles in the borough plan. Represent Whitestone and particularly HSG9 Gulf Drive. The plan appears to be, have been formulated without any consultation with residents or any assessment of the detrimental effects on them. It only talks about sites available and their sustainability. A simple paper exercise which pays no regard to existing residents. Neither does it show proper strategic plans for the longer term effects on transport, education and health. Certainly no benefits are shown. It is a drive to build as many houses as possible regardless of consequences. We accept that the Council are compelled to carry, 
carry out some house building due to government pressure, but the numbers must surely be based on local factors as we will be building in places like Great Windsor Park, for example. Gulf Drive is the start of the well-established two-mile country walk to the Lime Kilns public house with other walks leading off of it. It's used by families, ramblers, cyclists, horse riders, dog walkers, and during dry weekends, school holidays, there's a continuous stream of people walking it throughout the day and evenings. And people come from all over the borough to walk this particular open space because it's accessible. This makes it even more important to residents. The borough plan does not acknowledge any of these facts at all. A key council objective is to ensure residents have access to proper open space to help lead a healthy lifestyle with exercise and fresh air. In Whitestone, this is the only properly, uh, properly um, area that can match this objective. Why would you want to destroy it? Whitestone residents are seeing all of its green space areas disappearing and it's being supported by the council. <coughs> Chetwin Drive now appears to be the latest proposal. It's going to lead to us being one massive housing estate, and who the hell wants to live like that? The housing numbers in the plan clearly are disputed and don't seem to match those of the ONS, and Coventry overspill has led to us giving up our valuable open spaces for another town. And of course you'll note back to add Hawkesbury. Surely the duty to cooperate can only relate to where it's possible without damaging the environment of your own area. The fact that Nuneaton is the most densely populated town in Warwickshire seems to have been completely ignored. We therefore ask you to forget the past and review these numbers and locations and reduce them accordingly. Do not destroy this borough. Forget party politics and look to preserve areas such as HSG9 for the benefit of the whole community. Act as proper representatives of the residents who elected you. Make this town worth living in. Don't allow it to become a dumping ground for the rest of Warwickshire. Try and repair some of the damage to your reputation on the way the plan has been formulated and managed. Taking out some of these sites would certainly restore some confidence in the local government system, which at present is actually non-existent. Remember, once it is gone, it is gone. Stand up for the residents of Nuneaton and Bedworth, please. Mr White, obviously this evening's decision is about any main modifications to the plan. It isn't about the whole the plan. I should make that clear. <coughs> You've obviously eloquently put your case in regard to Whitestone. Are there any points of clarification? No. Okay, thank you very much. Moving on then to Alan Gilby. Can I just remind you, Mr Gilby, we are discussing the main modifications this yeah. evening. During stage two of the public examination, the independent inspector repeatedly made it clear <coughs> that he would only consider building proposals in the submitted plan, including the controversial Comte overspill he finally settled on 14,060 homes. Despite this, the plan now includes Hawkesbury, and the total has risen to 15,555, according to Appendix C of this meeting's notes. If you add to this the sites excluded from the plan, 775 at Cordicott, around 200 extra each at Higham Lane and Tuttle Hill, at around 500 at Chetwin Drive, you plan to around double the number of homes the government suggests are needed. This in a borough almost six times as densely populated as the Warwickshire average. Why? Who are the 15,000 families desperate to move in? Where will they work? Most of the jobs seem to be out of the borough. Where will they shop? Our town centre's dying, <coughs> and now you're building on the car parks with McCarthy and Stone. How will they travel? The roads are already congested and it's now reported train services are being reduced. Where are the extra schools? The doctors, the hospitals. How is Hawkesbury now in the plan all of a sudden, when the inspector said he would not accept sites outside the submitted plan? And why are the other sites not included? The Council's corporate plan aims and priorities in your agenda include <coughs> to improve the quality of life, environmental improvements, to provide a pleasant environment, to create a greener and cleaner environment, to lead in environmental issues addressing climate change and protection of the environment. Concreting over the green belt of prime agricultural land flies in the face of your own objectives. This flawed plan was conceived by your predecessors. The council leader resigned, the planning portfolio holder was outvoted at recent elections, and the head of planning left. The next consultation must be more open and easier to respond to. The Council's strapline is united to achieve. 
Please put petty party politics or loyalties to one side and work together with all councillors and your residents to put your own mark on this plan and reduce the development to a more acceptable level. The only people who like this plan are the developers. Your residents don't, and I don't think you do either. We urge you to think again. And I'd add a point if I've got a moment, the question you asked the gentleman there. When I went to the examination, a number of the experts that came along from the developers had never visited the sites when they did HSG 9 at Whitestone, which Mr White referred to. The lady got the names of the roads wrong, where the people work wrong, and she even had the town centre. In case you didn't know it, is it to the east of Whitestone? Thank, thank you very, very much. I'd just like to clarify we will be re renewing, reviewing housing numbers, as I've said before, if and when the plan is found, found, sound, found, sound, and within three years of it being found, sound. Can I thank you very much, Mr. Kennedy? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pandur. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Chair. Also, the village plan HSC 12. I'm concerned at another example of this council failure to provide a carefully considered and uh, sustainable baroque plan following the recent finding of the inspector regarding the site of Oxbury <coughs> village. The region should be concerned about the proposed changes to the borough plan and resolve to learn the, from the mistakes of previous uh, consultation by holding consultation events uh, in the Hawkesbury locality that are accessible to residents, including those in employment, and are also staffed by officers of the planning policy team who can answer issues from the residents of Hawkesbury. We need proper consultation and to listen to the views of the residents of Hawkesbury about what they want and need in the village before this unfair plan can go any further. There are over 740 dwellings already in the village and extra 380 plus 25 stockly over 400 dwellings will cause extra traffic, school places and health facilities. There is no school and no health centre and only one small shop in the village. Roads are not good enough to take more traffic. There are already new development going in Coventry on the other side of the canal, which will be adding more traffic. Significant educational contribution and provision will be needed for this to go ahead. We need educational and health facility in the village rather than sending children in faraway schools and we need health facilities. Cedars Primary School, St. Giles and Ash Greens senior schools are already far away and additional housing will further strain on these schools. There are only two main roads, Black Horse Road which is very narrow and residents are already complaining near the residential area and from railway crossing to Coventry Road only one side pavement. The other road is Iron Bridge Way where humps and speeding vehicles cause noise and safety problems. So, and the like increasing 400 houses, nearly 55% increase to the existing 740 houses. And having no uh, health centre, nothing, I don't know anybody will want to buy a house uh, in that village. No, if, uh, if they still you want to make the houses, when the children has to go four, five or two or three miles away, walking on very small black horse road on the one pavement. I don't think it was, uh, the plan is viable until the residents are consulted and uh, taken their views, what they want for their village to, before they can go ahead with this plan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any points to Councillor Panda. Councillor Panda. County Councillor Panda. Um, County Councillor Panda. Um, was you aware that Warwickshire County Council had withdrawn their objection um, in front of the inspector? No, they, they, they may have withdrawn, but they, are, they might have a uh, roads and more infrastructure, but not. Uh, the uh, people were not concerned with, uh, with the borough or the county council. So the, uh, the residents of Hawkesbury, they don't know what is happening, why they withdrawn. So they should have consulted before they go ahead with um, withdrawing their uh, uh, whatever their plans are. I totally agree with you. Um, you say they should have been 
consulted on the withdrawal of the um, uh, objection um, from as your county councillor, uh, what work did you do at the county council uh, to persuade your county council colleagues and the officers, as their county councillor in that area, to stop them withdrawing that um, uh, objection? So we, we are we'll asking them to first have a uh, consultation with the residents of uh, Hawkesbury. What do they want uh, for, so that before they can go ahead? So what did you do to stop them? We, so we, can, uh, we can uh, ask them, we can uh, write to them that with, we are not happy with whatever you are drawing. Why is it with wrong? <coughs> what did you do before they withdrew that objection? Point on trying it's to deep, make isn't it? Excuse me. It's more of such big ears, you're very deaf. Excuse me. No, just say, can I just say that it's really important that we can hear everybody's contribution to this meeting? Really important. Now we're listening to public speakers. We want to give them the opportunity to answer points of clarification in as calm a manner as possible. And I think a bit of mutual respect is something has to be a we should. So, yeah. Councillor Grant, I would ask you to withdraw several comments that you've made this evening. That's I don't good. think they're in the spirit of how we're trying to conduct this meeting. I'm grateful for <laughs> Councillor Pandora speaking mm -hmm. this evening. And I'd like to ask Councillor Lloyd if you can put the question again, because frankly, I, I have to admit, with the interruption, I forgot about it. So, Councillor Lloyd. Yeah. No, they, they may have a, sorry, they, they may have a withdrawn, uh, because of they might have provided the infrastructure for roadside and safety, uh, but not the other health facilities or schools or anything else, but they haven't consulted uh, uh, with the uh, residents of Hawkesbury. Same thing if they have made a mistake, but you are going to make, again make a mistake not consulting the people. Councillor I'm not suggesting they've made a mistake. Um, I'll put it in a nutshell. I'm, su I'm suggesting that you've made a mistake. So I'll ask you again. Coming from you. What? Yes. Councillor Graham, I think if this continues, we'll then I'm going to have to take advice from officers and ask you to leave the meeting. No. Councillor Pandor. Yeah, they, if they have made, you, are you saying they made a mistake, but the Hawkesbury village residents, they will put forward not, not to go ahead with the plan. But they can object to that one. But I'm saying that if they have made that one, but you are going to make another That's mistake. Not, not, That's not right. listening. No. I'm sorry if I'm confusing you. You're the county councillor yeah, for yeah, that area. Yeah. Warwickshire County Council are the highway authority. Warwickshire County Council withdrew their objection, right, from the plan. So the government inspector said the development can go in, right. So the question I'm asking you, as the county councillor of that area, I'm sure your residents all over Hawkesbury will be asking you the same question. What did you do to stop the county council withdrawing that objection? Look, uh, we didn't or didn't you know it. about it? Look, I didn't know about it. Uh, oh, I only seen them. Uh, look, we haven't got any email or anything or any message before they withdraw. But I'm not aware of when they withdrawn. But I only seen when the only documents which you have provided that they have withdrawn. Only a couple of weeks council before. And I'm going to thank you. I'm not going to embarrass you anymore. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Um, I've now got Lubs, Sitkovich, and... Yeah, I was going to Lubs. <laughs> uh, I don't wish in any way to cause you... No, don't worry. No, no problem. when you're ready. Thank you very much. Um, since we last met, the inspector said that Hawkesbury needs to be added to the plan. This is due in large part to the flawed methodology in the sustainability appraisal that MBBC have used in assessing the housing need and rolling over in the duty to cooperate in taking the overspill from Coventry. We're currently up to just over 15,500 new ho houses in the plan. Do we really need this many new homes within the borough? The statistics which you should be reviewing for the ONS suggest not. Yet the council, instead of reviewing a flawed plan at the pre-submission stage, wants to push on. The plan as it stands is falling apart. It has more holes in it than a Swiss cheese. Once again, I want to urge you to review the numbers downwards before the plan is submitted. I was racking my brains to think of examples when someone reviews something after submission. A student reviews an essay before submission. NICE reviews medications before they're allowed to be issued uh, and used on the, by the NHS. Parliament has a review, review procedure before passing any bills. 
Yet this council is determined to go against best practice adopted by any sensible individual or any professional body. In the meantime, more sites are added, such as Hawkesbury, and more people are made to suffer anxiety and stress. It is time to stop okay, the council's officers from having such a free hand and for the borough councillors to stand up for the members of this community. Um, I would finally uh, like to ask the committee, how will the consultation due to begin next week be more rigorous and reach a wider number of residents across the entire borough and not just parts of Nuneaton, which I think is what we felt happened um, sort of a year ago, last sort of February, March time, um, and not just sort of the mainly the town says and a couple of other sites, especially considering the fact that Hawkesbury are now in a position where they are playing catch up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor John Glass. No, I'm sure I'll get some before I come back. Let's get my usual mouth wet out first. I should advise you, Councillor Glass, in fairness to everyone else, that the clock has started. Okay, okay. cheers. Um, thanks for uh, for letting me to speak to um, tonight. Let's say straight away, as you probably heard from some members of HRV, and in the number of years I've been a councillor in that area, they're the most positive community group I've ever worked with. They're not NIMBYs, or, or like the current opposition, parties bananas. That means build anywhere, not near anybody. I am as annoyed as they are about the late inclusion of what's going to the local plan. Some say there are two types of politics, either the cock-up theory or the conspiracy theory. 99% are generally cock-up theory, but no conspiracy. There's a general feeling that the government inspector, the county council, and the, finally the borough council are part of that conspiracy. I can't seem to agree, disagree with that statement. The statement on Common Ground signed on the 8th of May seems to be a smoking gun. Other community groups had, have had months to prepare their cases. The government inspector had decided that the late common, common agreement between the county and the developers, he will not accept any more evidence from Hawkesbury. How daft is that? He has not listened to the residents, nor has he intended to do so. I understand he had, to, he had to fulfill government house and policies, but come on. There is to be an eight week consultation period for everybody bar Hawkesbury. No public consultation, no evidence gathering, no meetings with planning to see how the proposed development will affect the community. As stated in pages 17, 18 and 19, with the threat from the inspector to the local plan if delayed. In his letter to Mrs. Morton, the 8th of August, page, uh, on page 322, given the site consistently subject to substantial, substantial, substantial appraisals and local awareness. From what I have heard from the, from the hearings, I would see no need for addi additional prior to the main modification consultation. The questions I would ask from whom? Listen to the developers in the County Council. As stated, the lateness of the new deal between the county and developers were not made public. Chair, regardless of what happened to the Cabinet meeting tonight, there had to be some kind of, of method that the residents' grave concerns are forward to the inspector. And in my, in my opinion, there has been a great injustice dealt out to the people in Hawkesbury, which is such a shame for such a community, for, for such a positive community group who I have worked with over the years and will continue to do so in the future. Thank you very much, sure. Councillor Glass. Are there any comments? Thank you, Councillor Glass. The next speaker is Paul Mayer. Mr Mayer. Thank you. Good evening, Chair. Uh, well, this local plan has sunk to new depths with the inclusion of Hawkesbury straight into the modifications consultation. If you, the Cabinet, vote for the officers' recommendations in option three tonight. Emails circulated to councils by officers clearly stated that their intentions originally was to go for option two, 
when this letter from the inspector eventually surfaced. I put it to the cabinet that the only reason for the, op for the option change was that option two created offices far more wor work in reports. Not a very good reason if you are a resident of Hawkesbury, one might think. Another big concern for the action group is the council's decision to, tonight to start the consultation on the 10th of September, which only gives five days, including the weekend, for this council to fully advertise to the public of this borough the ins and outs of what they're going to be consulted on. At the last cabinet meeting on the 25th of July, portfolio holder, planning councillor Phillips, stated, engage and get out there how people can engage with the consultation. How is this possible in five days? Back to, back to Hawkesbury. If this council do not put on exhibitions in the village where the residents can ask officers questions, it will cast more doubt on whether this council is ignoring residents again and planning on with a developer's charter. This is serious and will not do this council any favours if they just keep following officers like sheep. We saw in May's elections the massive effect on the ruling group's majority for mistakes the old guard made regarding the local plan. This is your opportunity to listen to residents and maybe think how it will affect their lives. A week tonight is the full council meeting where members of the public get their only chance to ask questions and receive answers from the council. For the sake of democracy, put Hawkesbury, uh, put Hawkesbury, the Hawkesbury decision to full council for debate and in the meantime arrange uh, exhibitions by officers for Hawkesbury like every other site in the plan. Uh, and just speaking on uh, Ian Lloyd going on about the... Um, County Council, this council's got the, the, the option, there's three options, this council could go for option one and retain it in the green belt if they wanted to, so really the County Council issue which you harped on about for ten minutes earlier is pointless, you've got the option now, you know, whether all, all the County Council stuff's gone by the by side, you're going to go for option three for the simple reason it goes straight into the plan, the officers have not got to do any work and the, and the residents suffer. I didn't think you would. <laughs> um, I've got Mark Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you. Hello, yes, Mark Sullivan. I'm the um, uh, representative of the campaign to protect the Royal England Warwickshire branch, and I've uh, attended uh, examinations and previous open inquiries on this plan and the previous plan over quite a long time. The very vague grounds <coughs> given by officers for this recommendation don't really constitute any real case for what they're proposing. What I want to suggest, though, is the council does not have to take the inspector's advice insofar as it can define it. It can and it should get back into the driving seat itself and carry out a new public consultation itself and not pass the buck back to an inspector who has come up with this proposal six months after the public hearings, at which hearings he did not discuss Hawkesbury in open court at all. Our proposal is that the council should tell the inspector that it wishes to suspend the examination process for, we suggest, six months, so that's extendable. Suspension of an examination can be done by agreement between the inspector and the local authority. It's in the procedural practice issued by the inspectorate and um, the officers know of it. In that period, it would consult the public anew on both total housing numbers and the choice of main sites, including Hawkesbury. In other words, include Hawkesbury and then look at what other people feel about other sites. And then revise the plan and publish again. Uh, the inspector is not going to refuse that. If it was to try to, the MPs would go to the minister. Because it's perfectly reasonable practice on page 38 of the process. Now, the officers will tell you that doing this would mean that the other developers could apply for other sites because the council would not have a five year land supply. And you would meanwhile leave sites on appeal. Now, I don't believe you should be. Uh, accept that. I think you should set that aside for two, four reasons. One, the council's real five-year requirement for its own needs is about 400 houses a year times five years, which is 2,000. And it has that supply now. That was that. We know that it has supply for that much. 
the much higher number quoted is based on the new draft plan with its four to five thousand houses and commentary. But that isn't approved. That's not the present plan. You judge it against the present plan. Then the third point is that in the time needed, which I say is, I say, six months, other new sites would not reach an appeal level, even if they had been applied for. And fourthly, if it's land in the Greenbelt, it's in the Greenbelt now, land applied for in the Greenbelt does not get permission on appeal. The government policy is they do not grant, inspectors do not grant it on appeal. You have to first remove land from Greenbelt. So I think the council has long stops that help it. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Sullivan. Are there any points? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Sullivan, for your contribution to our meeting today. Um, the next speaker is Bob Copland. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to speak. Well, I'm hearing a lot tonight uh, from, shall we say, experts at the back of the room. As far as I'm concerned, we're here tonight looking at this because of the letter that's come from the inspector. Now, the inspector, whatever has been said, it's just been said recently by the last uh, speaker, the inspectors are really running the show. It, it was our plan, but it's now, well, say, I'm not under council, now your plan that was handed uh, to the inspector. I'm here tonight because I've worked, like John, with the HVRA for many, many years, and it's the most respected, you know, residents association, I think, in my opinion, in this borough. But I'm sorry, you cannot throw the idea that this is nothing to do with the county away from this. That is just not correct. It has changed. That's why we're here, because the county have withdrawn. And I'm at a loss to know what has changed to get the county council to withdraw their objections. There's always been issues to do with applications in that area. Why? Because of a very poor road network. It's been explained. Everybody, lots of people in the room know all about what it's like down there. And indeed, the planning committee has usually, when applications come in, been as one in this, looking at this area, no development due to poor road infrastructure. This report, and this is the bit that really worries me, this report talks about two ways into the site. Now, when I've looked at the plan, and my knowledge of been down there many, many, many times, and I'm fearful that one of the ways might include through Baton Road to get into this site through Baton Road and through the underpass at Stevenson Road. Now, that would be a disaster. The land down there could be developed, people might be for it or against it or whatever, it could, with massive amount of money put into it. And that's one of the places that maybe they're gonna do that. But people going to their houses through an industrial estate, now that's fine, lots of people do that at the moment, but we're planning for the future. Surely we wouldn't want to build an estate where people have to go through an industrial estate and vice versa. People then would be coming in from work and to work through a housing estate. Not good. The county councillor, and I've heard what he said here tonight, and I've heard his answers to questions, well, he didn't have an answer, uh, have got a lot of explaining to do. That is for certain. The people down there want to know what has changed that the county have withdrawn their objections. What have they been talking to the developer about? I personally understand why... Okay, let's... Uh, Councillor... Uh, there we go. Uh, I do have to interrupt you because we have to move on. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank Mr. Uh, I do apologise, but it's not a statement, it's a, it's a, it's a question, so I don't know if it's a deal. It is actually, we, it's not a time for questions, it's okay, actually I'll for you to contribute to our uh, debate tonight. Okay, it's, well basically, it's, um, I'm a, a new resident of Sinclair Drive. Um, I bought my place, and I moved in there on the 5th of June this year, 
uh, and I went through all the relevant checks uh, through my solicitors for searches and I rang the Leeds and Bedworth Council a number of times because where I live on Sinclair Drive it, it overlooks the golf course and my concern was such a vast area at some point is it going to be built on and what kind of is there anything in the pipeline I was told on numerous times no due to that I bought my property on the 5th of June. I work for the emergency services, um, work in shift work in the most demanding role in the police. Now, I feel that I've been cheated. I feel that I've been cheated because if I would have known sooner about any proposed plans, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have bought this property. I would have looked elsewhere. You know, and I just feel cheated. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Um, due to the short notice and um, also the wonderful timing that means you can't really get here when you have a full time job, I haven't got much prepared to say. Um, I would like to echo what gentleman has just said. I'm a new resident. Absolutely nothing came from searches about development. Um, I wanted to bring up the problems with infrastructure of the roads. It's already a nightmare in, in Hawkesbury, especially when there's problems with the train barriers um, and also working that's been going on with the other development just over the border, which has caused many headaches for the residents. Um, it's no time for questions, I understand. I'll save those for next week and I'll come with more preparation. Thank you very much. By all means, we're not stopping you asking the question. I'm not saying we're not okay. to answer. Well, my question, I, I did arrive slightly late, so if it hasn't been answered, I do apologise. My question was about um, what the difference was. I sort of heard some of the answers or some of the uh, speculation. Um, the difference between why um, developments have been rejected by um, the planning, whereas this seemed to have something more to do with county council, surely the planning could still be rejected. If it's been rejected before. We've noted that and Thank I know the planning cabinet member or an officer who may be able to uh, proceed on to Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Isabel Jenks. Hello, thank you for letting me speak. Um, I'm from Ash Green and I'm concerned with many residents about the uh, how in the last few months. Hawkesbury has been out of the plan and then reintroduced to the plan. And um, that's been after all the hearings and the submissions have been put to the examination inspector. That seems incomprehensible to many people that are living and in the Bermuda and also many people in all the different wards. And that's hence why so many people are here tonight talking about it. Um, what has been stated by Hawkesbury here today is just what's been reiterated before in the hearings and the submissions. So it just seems at odds, you know, that suddenly in August you can put somebody in. And a lot of people are saying, well, well the same thing happened in November, December, and whatever. I'm not saying you put them in, the examination inspector that you did. So we're all at odds, really, at how this process actually does proceed. Um, Greenville can't just be sort of put aside as if it's got no safe status at all. I'm very pleased to hear what CPRE have said tonight. Um, and also, I think you can't just take these inflated numbers, wherever they come from, which I know is from the six authorities which you've explained, um, you know, it hasn't come from Coventry, it's come from the six authorities saying these numbers have to come. So it is Coventry's overspin, if you like, but it, they didn't decide it. So it just seems that Nuneaton and Bedworth is just directed by everybody else mm -hmm. what to do. You know, if the highways say you can't have it in now, but Hawkesbury can go in later, they didn't apply the same things to other areas in the, um, the inspector didn't seem to apply the same things to other sites when we were at the hearings. So, you know, the public is really upset about all of this. Um, now, another question 
that was all was brought in by Hawkesbury was where are these two end pieces? Now, it doesn't matter if you answer it tonight or you answer it next week. It doesn't seem much point of people coming and sort of saying their concerns and nothing gets directed back to them. Mm. It all seems as if it's all one way. You can extend it, the inspector. He tells us at the hearings, nothing will be brought in after when we finished it, three weeks. And yet, in August the 28th, or whenever it was, he introduces another site to go in. So we're all rather at odds with this procedure. And it doesn't seem correct. Mm. Anyway, another thing is, which I'll just finish on, because you've let everybody else speak on. Your corporate aims, and by that I mean money in the bedroom, just appear to be at odds to this plan. Mrs. On both Jones, of these recommendations you that you're putting Thank you very much for your comments tonight. I've tried not to let people uh, overrun. Um, are there any points of clarification? Can I thank you very much for your comments tonight, Mrs. Jones? Um, I've then got Councillor Claire Godley. Councillor Godley? Thank you very much. Um, I think most of the points that I was going to make have, have been covered, so I'll, I'll just kind of wing it. Um, there's something that I'd like to pick up that was mentioned in 3.5 where it says that um, the site could not be accessed from the strategic highway network and an alternative would be costly and prohibit viable housing scheme. Well, have a look at it, the terminology is either incorrect or there's going to be some sort of major transport thing going on because your strategic network is your M6. A trouble for, and the only way I can see this access in is through local roads. So I would suggest that that's incorrect. Um, also, we've heard about the uh, highways authority being the county council. Uh, what what have the county councils done for the highways authority? But you have in four point two option one do nothing. Mm. You have the yeah. option to do nothing. So you've got the evidence before you. You've got the residents' views. You have the option to do nothing. It's not anybody else's fault if you choose not to do nothing. That's on exactly. you. Um, so again, the highways team are dealing with things through um, the highways authority methods and the, the technical aspects of it. You can deal with the emotive aspects of it uh, and, and everybody's emotions and the political aspects of it, if you like. That's, that is on you. That's not the highways team. Um, if we look at Appendix C, um, I'm going to just bring up the housing um, trajectory that's in Appendix C. I mean, this is kind of a bit of a sticky finger in the air and see what happens. Because when you look at Appendix C on the totals, you're talking about eight years from 2011 to 2018-19, the development or the uh, bringing forward of 3,050 homes, and then we skip to 2020 to 2022, you want 3,029 homes. What developer in their right mind is going to flood their market so much that that devalues their own products? I work for a housing uh, de development, we've got a, de uh, a development arm. Nobody in their right mind would actually flood the market in that, in two years, in that space of time. So I think the trajectory might be slightly. Um, off. I'm not sure how you're going to encourage developers to actually produce that many houses in the space of two years either. Um, uh, uh, and for this, for, for Hawkesbury, you know, I appreciate the inspector's got to draw the line somewhere. He's got to say, line in the sand, no further things to be taken forward. But this is a completely new allocation for everybody. This isn't uh, one that's been discussed previously or that's been brought up at the inspectorate, this is a, a completely new addition and it's only fair that it gets treated in the same manner as all the others where they've got full consultations, they do, they, there's, the residents are included, you can't just keep batting things off. Councillor Goldberg, can I thank you very much? Are there any points of question? Any questions? Councillor? I'll ask you. What did you do to stop the uh, Highway Authority with drawing their... Uh, I, wasn't, their I, uh, <laughs> I wasn't made aware that the Highways Authority had withdrawn any objections mm -hmm. because I'm not a member of the Highways Development Team. Okay, I'm, I'm an elected an member for Arbury. I'm an elected member for Arbury. Mm -hmm. Should it have been on Arbury, then I'm sure I would have been involved in some way, maybe. But 
as the um, borough plan is in your court, they wouldn't actually speak to me because they're not allowed to. Yeah. But the uh, majority of amendment is in your court. That's, 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 that's all I say. <laughs> option one, option one, do nothing. Over to you. Thank you, Councillor. You're welcome. That concludes our public speaking session. Um, any member of the cabinet? I know I've got several questions before this class. Councillor responsibility. Yeah, I've got quite a lot. Um, I can understand um, why Hawkesbury residents are uh, I've got a lot of people in here. Um, a number of family members that live in Old and New Hawkesbury. So I know, the same as they know, the difficulties of getting in and out of Hawkesbury. I can say that because we're not talking about a planning issue, so there's no um, uh, personal um, uh, you know, uh, problems with that. Um, but. It is, you've got a humpback bridge at the one side of it coming over the canal, and you've got a railway crossing the other side. It's an area that is really a uh, highway um, uh, side of things, is a disaster. Um, and it, it is, currently, and could get, and will get worse. It's been repeated on a number of occasions um, about um, the county, and I am angry with the county for withdrawing um, uh, their um, objection at such a late stage, uh, no matter what the reason, and putting us in this predicament. The mention about option one, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who uh, would love us uh, to go for option one and scupper the whole borough plan. I can't do that, oh. and I won't. I can't do that, and I won't. Um, but, um, it's been mentioned on a number of occasions tonight. Uh, Hawkesbury is different. It did come in at a very late stage. I hope, um, that I'm looking at the portfolio holder, I'm winging it here, um, that the portfolio holder takes account of that and during um, the eight week process, the consultation process, um, that on the amendments, obviously, obviously, during that process, that they at least hold a um, consultation uh, day um, down at Hawkesbury. Um, all they've got to do is obviously tie it with the, the Hawkesbury Residents Association, and I'm sure they'll make uh, their uh, unit uh, available for that. So I'm hoping they, the, the portfolio holder takes that on board. Um, it is, it is a difficult one, you know, not once have I, come to, have I stepped in and interrupted anybody, it just shows how uh, ignorant some people are, I wasn't getting to them. Um, at the end of the day, it is, it's personal to a lot of people, it's personal to me, you've heard me say I've got family down there and I have to go down there sometime to collect my kids for some old grandkids at school. Um, it is a difficult one. But we're in a position, and let's don't forget this, through no fault of our own on this occasion, it was a withdrawal of um, the uh, objection by the County Council through further works, you heard the developer um, uh, just mentioned, on a study of that area. They obviously, as I said before, didn't ask the people of uh, that area what it's like down there. Um, else they wouldn't have come up and withdrawn that objection. The county councillor did nothing. Absolutely nothing. That's crystal clear. Well, you are. Why not going for option one? Mm -hmm. As I say, you know, um, I let people draw their own conclusions about the interruptions. But uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, uh, at the end of the day, uh, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to stop with the plan. I hope that the portfolio takes that on board and I hope there's not there's still time for the county council to re-look at it and I I hope that the county council is useless but your decision is now can I just say I think what's being said excuse me 
I'm going to have to ask people. Yes, please. Can I just ask people? I know it's a very emotive subject, but I am having to consider asking people to leave the meeting if interruptions continue. Let's try and listen to the debate. I think that is in the best interest of everybody that we hear everybody's comments. Councillor. I hope people, uh, no matter what their views are, um, you know, do know that I do care. Of course I care about the people of Hawkesbury. Why shouldn't I care about the people of Hawkesbury? But the problem is, as I said, I am not going to scupper the whole plan, and that's what some people in this room, um, politically motivated and non-politically motivated, would want. Do I blame them? No. It's their right if that's what they want to try and do. I'm not going to be the tool to do it. At the end of the day, we've got an eight-week process. We have to remember, and I put a plea out to the people of Hawkesbury, right, that you have to go to that caravan <coughs> if the portfolio <coughs> is there. Hopefully, we'll have forms there that can be filled in for objections and give them to the individual that where it matters. If you want to change this, then you change it with the inspector. He's the one you've got to change it with. I'm hoping that we'll have the forms available. People can fill them in there, get the correct information, and get them to him. Because he's made the mistake. He shouldn't have, he shouldn't have got the county council to withdraw their objection and it should be writing to your county council as well and asking them to re-look at this area given the road traffic uh, area and asking them to put the objection back in if the objection's there it will not happen it falls simple as that it's the objection at this late stage that has done that now i'm hoping that Councillor John Gass and Councillor Pandar, I did give him a bit of a rake in earlier on, and Councillor Pandar, I hope that they both write to the County Council and ask that that's done. Um, at the end of the day, as I say, it's a very difficult decision. We're in a difficult position, and I'm going to have to, I mean, I shall be voting for option three. So. <laughs> okay, I've got a couple of things that I hope may be helpful. There were lots of uh, concerns expressed about several issues, so I just want to ask, I think it is appropriate to ask Catherine, actually, for her professional advice in this regard. The housing numbers that have been agreed previously by this authority, the government inspector has agreed that they are correct. Yes. Okay. I think that's important, I say, because people are wary of it whether that was the case, but we now have a position where the government inspector has said the housing numbers that this authority has put forward are correct and he is not challenging that. Can I ask, option two, originally, it has been said, was the preferred option of officers. Can I ask why now we are, your recommendation is option three? The inspector made it clear that to go along with option one or option two would require the council to carry out further evidence to support either option one or option two in light of what the sustainability appraisal says and the emphasis on how that has shaped the development and the sites that are in the plan. So he would want us to carry out some further evidence to, to suggest why what we'd done previously was incorrect. What he's saying is, the way you've looked at the sustainability appraisal um, uh, in the past, the sustainability appraisal has led how we've then allocated the sites. And it's the, the, the imbalance at the moment between the revised sustainability appraisal and the allocations which he's asking us to correct. So the work in regard to the sustainability appraisal has already been conducted by officers of this council? No, the sustainability appraisal is an independent document not conducted by officers. So that has already been done independently of this authority? Yes. Okay. I just think that's important to know. Um, the, it has been suggested that there may be, that the Highways Authority, Warwickshire County Council, have withdrawn their 
objection. And the suggestion that that may be because there would be an alternative route through Baton Road. Is that the case? Or is it the case that the developer has done further research, evidence gathering, but actually says the existing road network, they prove to the county council that that can cope? <laughs> the, can, the, the promoter of the land and, the, and uh, on behalf of the owner of the land has carried out some further modelling with the county council. The county council's concern previously was on the effect on the strategic road network. So it was the traffic coming off Backhorse Road onto the surrounding roads which are, do form part of the strategic road network. The developer, through the modelling, was able to prove that with mitigation, that strategic road network could cope with the numbers of development. The mention of two accesses is two accesses from the development site to Blackhorse Road, of which there are already two accesses into the site from the existing road network. Indeed, I think I'm right in remembering that the option of going from Stevenson Road, the road then, through onto the site was considered by the inspector of the, of the appeal and it was considered not to be a viable option as a highway access into the site. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going through some of the queries that were raised by people in the room, so I'm wanting to uh, do justice, if you like, to raising those queries with officers. It was questioned on section 3.5 of the report uh, that that somehow was uh, not quite right um, in regard to the strategic road infrastructure and that related to motorways. I think you've slightly explained that to me, Catherine, but can I ask you again to explain that so I'm clear? Yeah, what the County Council are looking at is of when they're looking at highway concerns or high, uh, highway issues around to development, or how the site can be accessed from the existing road network and the wider strategic road network which generally includes all A roads and B roads, and in this instance would include roads outside of our authority and the roads in, in Coventry City Council's area as well. So the modelling has been done to suggest that the numbers of vehicle movements from the site and how they would then affect the strategic road network as well as the local road network, which is obviously that good. Yeah. There was also queries in regard to Appendix C, and the housing trajectory graph. Can I ask what evidence base goes behind that? The evidence base behind that is discussions held with all of the developers to prove that their sites are deliverable and developable. Those were also put before the inspector as part of the hearings on all the other strategic sites. And in fact, our original documentation and that graph, a similar graph is already in the local plan. Um, we were in, encouraged by the inspector to push back some of the deliverability on some of our sites, particularly those in the green belt, because he considered they wouldn't come through as early as we had predicted. So it's a process of using our experience as to how, how long sites get to be developed, how long applications get to be dealt with, how long sites are remediated if need be, how long it takes to get builders actually on site and, and completions. It's using that experience, but also in discussion with the developer, which is the right thing to do, which is what the government guidance suggests we do, and that was all put before the inspector as well. So the only site that hasn't been put before the inspector, which is on that trajectory, is the Hawkesbury site. So what about the residents? So, so we followed the guidance of government yeah. When, but not the people. Do you get getting that graph? Can I ask you? I do appreciate there's a passion in the room tonight, but I think I want to hear and I want everyone here to hear the answer. So that's based on government guidance. Right, okay. I'm nearly there. Sorry, Catherine. Right. Um, it's been suggested tonight that emotion mm -hmm. is a very important part of planning, and of course, emotion is. But the legislation set out by government. As I understand it, has, we have to set a borough plan based upon evidence. 
rather than emotion. Is that correct? Yes. That is a government way of dealing with this. And we as an authority have to follow the government's guidance. Yeah, we have to provide evidence which supports what we're saying in the plan, and, and that's both ways. And <clears throat> if any of those numbers change, then the evidence base behind those numbers would also have to change. I think it's also important to say that actually we're at the part of the process now, it's still, the plan is still under examination. This is part of the process, and that is different to how local plans used to be looked at and inspected before. So the hearings that we've had were only a small part of that process. The consultation on the main modifications is also a part of that process. And that's why it's in a set format. And that's why Councillor Lloyd's already mentioned forms. Because it's in a set format that you have to make comments or objections at this stage. They're all, spent, all sent to the inspector. The inspector is in charge of that examination process and it's entirely up to him whether he chooses to have any more hearings or not. He may well do so, he may well not do so, but it's his choice. Thank you very much, Catherine. I have to say I want to talk in regard to the addition that the inspector has suggested of Hawkesbury. I know the area very well. Until very recently, I did represent that area. Um, and I know the work that went on in regard to the highway infrastructure in particular. I note 3.6 of this report, about three quarters of the way through it, there is a sentence. As the County Council's objection was the only reason for omitting this site. So it seems to me it is very key that the County Council has withdrawn its objection. Indeed, if the County Council still objected, this site could not be considered today. I'm well aware of that area, I'm well aware of the downtime of that level of crossing, I've had meetings in regard to this, I'm well aware of the great <coughs> limited bridge over into Coventry, and I'm well aware of other complications at that site. I am really encouraging the community to take part, if option three is the preferred option today, to take part in any consultation. But I do think in regard to this, I'm going to support Councillor Lloyd's uh, suggestion and hope that the planning cabinet member will actually make special provision to get some kind of opportunity for residents in Hawkesbury Village, and I think there is a specific uh, need in this area, to have that opportunity of face-to-face -face, uh, discussion with planning officers, as indeed other people have. I think this is a specific case. Uh, I hope and trust the County Council will withdraw, uh, uh, will change their mind on this, but I appreciate they have to look at evidence in the same way we do. And I think the way forward for this is to allow the consultation to take place, to make extra provision to facilitate that in Hawkesbury. Um, and obviously both developers and members of the community can actually make their comments known to the inspector. I'm really sorry, but I can't bring you I just wondered whether that would happen before the consultation started or during the process. We haven't actually come to any recommendations. We're going to do that in June, course. Any further comments from members as well? No, I think basically it's a sad place we're at at the present moment in time. We need a sound plan. As the gentleman at the back there said, we have been subject to um, planning by appeal. Um, this was a bolt out of blue, um, but following the inspector who's running the plan, right, and we did consider what um, was mentioned the other day about a pause, right, but we've already at a stage whereby I don't think it would serve any real purpose uh, because we're already at the stage whereby. He's looking, the inspector is looking for us now to go through originally a six week consultation, but we've put it back to eight. I will support um, recommendation three, and I will go through, yeah, there is a, we'll go through the recommendations that a further main modification to the borough plan for the Hawkesbury site on Black Horse Road, the set out in Appendix B, be approved for consultation alongside the main modifications as agreed at Cabinet. I didn't expect to see it. 
Subject to 201 above, the revised housing trajectory appendix C and an updated policy plan appendix D be approved for consultation alongside the main modifications. The period of statutory public consultation, instead of it being next Monday, we'll move it to a week today. That's when it will be the eight week period will begin. And it'll also give us a week. Let me finish. It will also give us a week to already start the um, implementation of writing out to the 3,000 odd people by email, etc., letting them know, and any other way we can, of letting them know that the consultation will be starting on the 12th of September. No, I mean, what ways are you going to try and get it out other than the people? Can I ask that we allow Councillor Finnett to continue with what I he's just wanted to? a bit of clarification. Can I say? He hasn't finished actually his recommendations. Thank you, Councillor. 2.31, delegated authority be given to the Head of Planning in consultation with the Cabinet Member for Planning and Development to take account of any responses received during the statutory period of public consultation and make any further minor amendments to the plan where this is necessary to collect errors or clarity and to submit the responses and the revised plan to the examination expected for consideration. Now, that is something officers do. We don't see that as councillors. I believe that's true. Mm -hmm. Your responses go straight to the inspector. Now, regarding Hull Street and what's been said tonight, and we have thought about this, um, as the proposed main modification for Hawkesbury is being made during the examination of the local plan, the process for making objection or comments is different from other periods of public participation. We know that. This is because all comments objections have to be made on the official forms which were once collated and then sent direct to the planning inspector for his consideration. Now, if I do say that I want to add an extra recommendation here in regards to um, Hawkesbury, it goes, in regards to Hawkesbury, officers will be instructed to arrange for letters to be sent out to the residential properties close to the site between now and the end of next Monday, and that the formal period of public participation begin on Wednesday, September the 12th, for a period of eight weeks, and a delegated authority be given to the Head of Planning in conjunction with myself, to arrange for and publicise a drop-in session or sessions in the Hawkesbury area within the early part of the consultation. Right? We can't go to examination. We can't really stop. No, we've but been screwed. I'm yeah. sorry. We have been Excuse screwed. Excuse me. Can I yeah. just Who's say? Calling? Everybody here has You, you never listen to me when you're not my door, Julie. Why what? should we listen to you now? And oh, finally, 2.4, the report be marked not for calling on the grounds of urgency. We're going to do drop-ins, we're going to send letters out, we're going to try and do as much consultation. Catherine, can you outline to the membership how the consultation actually works? What? Yeah, the consultation is will be a series of letters if we don't have people's emails, addresses or emails to everybody that's either made comments or objection to the plan so far. And that's the same way as the uh, programme officer kept in contact with everybody and also everybody that's already on the council's database of residents association or in people interested in the local plan. What we did originally at the first stage was to send out separate letters to those people who live near the strategic allocation. So that's the extra bit that you've just added in here that we will send as many individual letters as we, we can to those residents of, of the Hawkesbury site. Uh, we will obviously it pays council tax to receive a letter. We will also send out press releases and work with, with the press to, to publicise publis yeah. the eight week period as well, as well. Everything will be on the council's website and officers are available here to answer queries or questions if there are any. How people respond to the consultation is, as, as I've said a, a couple of times already, is, a, is the way that the government asks you to respond. And it's on set forms, which again will be available to download from the council's web, website or will be available in paper copies for people to fill in. If we're able to arrange a drop-in session, then they'll also be available there as councillor suggested. Yeah. 
Neil, you're moving those. I'll move those, yeah. Second, yeah. Then we're with a residents association to make sure the Thank word gets out on how Thank you very much. to Can I do that, to do your job for Lubs, you. Lubs, I appreciate the passion in the room, as I've said, but I do wish to conduct the business of the council. All those in favour of those recommendations as amended, please. That is then agreed. Can I thank everybody for their time? I hope that everyone who's been here today will take part in that consultation. It's very important yeah. that everybody is, whether that be developers or even residents of the area. Thank you very much. I'm afraid we've finished public consultation on that item. That's okay, but it is already. It was just at the drop of the session. If they could be when people are not necessarily up to